Okay, so I was pleasantly surprised by Twitter today, as I am most days, uh, when I saw that one of our favourite personages has re-emerged. Cast your minds back, if you will, a few months ago when uh, Lady in Waiting, the Queen's Lady in Waiting, Lady Susan Hussey, uh, was, um, was unceremoniously kicked out by the royal family for daring to ask this woman where she was from. That's right, Ngozi Fulani, but she's not really called an Ngozi Fulani because, uh, because her real name is Caroline Smackhead or something. I don't know. I'm not going to do my homework. Why should I? You tell me in the comments what her real name is. It's uh, uh, Herdley, Heedley, Healy. Is her surname and her first name something, you know, Sharon or something? I don't know. You tell me. I can't remember. Anyway, the point is this grifter is back and Richard Madeley is having none of it. So what we're going to do in today's video, we're going to take a look at Richard Madeley bashing Ngozi Fulani. He doesn't really bash her. I think he should have bashed her, right? I'll make that clear, okay? Because she's a grifter and she's a race baiter, yes? That's right, that's what she is. I made a whole other video about Ngozi Fulani uh, a few months back at the time when Lady Susan Hussey was kicked onto the street by the royal family, kicked to the curb. Get out, you racist old bag. <laughs> I made a whole video about Fulani at the time of that incident and uh, I went into how that's not her real name and that uh, her whole personality, the thing she's really proud of, the thing that she pushes, uh, the, her whole shtick is this Africanness, right? But she did... She was born and raised in London by parents who are from the Caribbean. She has no African relatives whatsoever, but she never says this. Like, her whole shtick, she dresses up like what a middle-class white person might expect a tribal African woman to look like. It just looks like an embarrassing racist stereotype, uh, the way she goes about dressed when she goes on TV and stuff. Um, not in her real life, by the way, when she's doing whatever she does, running her weird charity, which is another thing I might get into a bit later in this video, because, uh, well, anyway, uh, yeah, she's, the, the whole, whole personality is being African, despite having no African in her at all, right? She's, she's got parents, her parents were from uh, the Caribbean, she was born and raised in London, right? And then this 83-year-old woman sees her with these big fake dreads on, the teeth necklace, <laughs> <laughs> like a leopard print, <laughs> bloody. She looked ridiculous, right? Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure most Africans would look at her and say, what the fuck is that? Take it off now. You're insulting us. So Lady Hussey, the lady in waiting, saw this mad spectacle and uh, went over to, as her job description tells her she must, uh, at these social gatherings, the royal affairs, things that they do, ribbon cutting events, I don't know what was going on, some, some kind of, I don't know, they were speaking to lots of different charities. I think Ngozi Fulani was there representing Sister Space, which is her charity, right? Um, and so Lady Lady... Uh, Susan Hussey goes over there and, and asks her, uh, where are you from? Uh, you know, because that's part of her job description, you know, find out who the people are, where they're from, what the, who are they representing. She answered it by saying she was from Sister Space. She answered her saying, I'm from London. I've lived here all my life, Mom. What could you possibly mean? But if we are to believe uh, what... Le and then this is another thing, actually. Ngozi Fulani and her best mate say this happened. So we don't even know if it did happen. But basically, if we take uh, for face value what they said, what happened is Lady Susan Hussey basically insisted and said, no, 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 no. Where are you really from? Right? Because, you know, the dreadlocks, the tooth necklace, the leopard print from your latest kill. Right? Uh, it made, it was like this woman is begging to talk about her Africanness, which she doesn't have. Right? She's changed her, changed her name to Ngozi Fulani. Right? She's dressed like a lunatic, because <laughs> that is not, that is not the national dress of any real country. But anyway, if we are to believe what happened, uh, according to Ngozi Fulani and her best mate, Lady Susan Hussey, an 83-year-old lady-in-waiting who's lived in Buckingham Palace since she was about 20, uh, basically asked this woman uh, where she was from and insisted a little bit, right? And this was an act that was, it was unforgivable. And, and the palace's response uh, was to, you know, take 
Lady Susan Humphy by the scruff of her neck uh, and just lob her out onto the street. <clears throat> Get lost, you racist old bag. You, your 60 years of surface, service were all a lie. You get out, go away. Anyway, the point is they, they, they got rid of her. They relieved her of her duties, I believe. And, um, and which I thought was a bitch move. Really, I did. It was pathetic. You know, genuflecting to this madness. Right? But anyway, whatever. Uh, they, they kicked her out. And then she met Ngozi Fulani again. Like an attempt at reconciliation, she apologised, the palace apologised, they said that the, the incident was unacceptable. And so months later, having been able to think of things over, and Ngozi Fulani, you know, sitting there um, in a, in a bedsit in London, you know, hiding from the, the inland revenue. <laughs> uh, she, she's had time to mull it all over now, the apology, the sit down with uh, Lady Susan Hussey and um, and what do you think? Do you think she is uh, happy with how things turned out? The, the, the monarchy apologising to this one nobody for nothing? How do you think, what do you think, how do you think she took it? How do you think she took it? Let's roll the clip. It's a math. Of the incident that took place at a reception last November, Buckingham Palace made clear the comments made by Lady Susan were deeply regrettable. Lady Susan immediately expressed her sincere apologies and stepped aside from her honorary role. These apologies were reiterated in person at a meeting in December that was filled with warmth and understanding. That reflects the original statement. Mm. At the conclusion of this meeting, a joint statement was issued in full agreement with Ms Fulani in which these apologies were accepted and it was recognised no malice had been intended by Lady Susan. Well, here we get to the fresh bit. In that statement, they say a number of pledges were made by the palace which have all been honoured, including enhancing diversity and inclusivity programmes. It was also agreed that no further media comment would be made. And here's the bit. For the avoidance of any doubt, we are deeply sorry for the incident that took place and apologise for the distress and difficulty it caused to Ms Fulani. Why isn't that enough for you? You know, Richard Maidley gets a, a lot of flack, but he's, I think he's actually a pretty stand-up guy, actually, you know? Uh, anyway, he did that very well, didn't he? <laughs> you know, he's just like, here's the points, right? They apologised. You said you wanted an apology. Why isn't that enough for you? Why isn't it enough for you, Ngozi? Let's let's hear. Who are they apologising to? Mm -hmm. I, I, if you're sorry, tell me you're sorry. Mm -hmm. If you're not, it speaks for itself. I think but... there's a number of things wrong with that statement, mm. if I'm honest. I think the agreements that they've propose that they've met or honoured are not the agreements that we set out with mm. them. Um, and I think if you're able to make a statement in the middle of the night to the public, why can't you give the apology if that they you were to, if, OK, if they were to put that statement in an email to you, a private email to you mm. now, and you were to get it in the next two or three minutes... If would... you have to ask somebody for an apology, it is not an apology. I'm, clear, I'm just making the point mm. so that everybody understands, yeah? I don't see... What is so hard to say, I'm sorry? I, you sent me an invitation, so you know where my, how to find me, you know how to say sorry. Mm -hmm. If you're sorry, then say sorry. Mm -hmm. If you're not, I get it. But when you make this apology to everybody, I don't know who you're apologising to, but one thing, it's International Women's Day. Right. It is. Yeah, and we, um, the Sisters Best Charity, has suffered as a result, direct result. When you think that this was supposed to be uh, for violence against women and girls, because of this incident, the, the violence has been directed to me. The palace hasn't intervened. I think they could have, all right? So what I've had to do, I've now temporarily stepped down as CEO You're of Sisters that Space. Now, yeah. I am announcing that now because the service users mm -hmm. and the community can't access us properly. This whole thing has cost us a fortune because we had to pay our own PR to stop the, the, yeah. the press from and coming up. PR? It was horrible. Well, and it's it's Go on, Richard Maidley, he's got her. He's got her. He's, he's trying to narrow down. He's trying to, you know, he's got her in the crosshair there, hasn't he? Hasn't he? Because uh, he's saying, uh, you know, what is it you want exactly? They've apologised. They've sat down with you. Do you want them to put it in an email for you? Do you? Do, do, is that what you want? And goosey, right? What, what do you want? And then she starts talking about how her charity has been affected. Sister Space. Sister Space is for battered women. Ethnic battered women, by, by the way. If you're white and you go there, 
Take a hike, love. Try your chances. Try your luck at the YMCA. I'm sure, I'm sure battered women will be fine sleeping at the YMCA. Anyway, this grifter, alleged grifter, who's allegedly hiding from the inland revenue, allegedly, uh, is, um, you see, this is the thing, right? Uh, she says she stepped down because an old woman asked her about five months ago where she was from and she was a bit upset about it, right? That's why her charity has suffered and can't protect the battered women anymore, the battered ethnic women anymore, because, because, uh, because, Lady Susan Hussey, because institutionalised racism, right? And, uh, yeah, that's it. You, you know, because, and it's not... Not in any way because there are financial irregularities with Sister Space. None at all. I, I hope none of you Google that and find out what I'm saying isn't happening, right? Because, yeah. If it's been that bad, and it clearly has, and you're stepping down mm. now, you've just, you've just made that public for the first time, do you actually at some level regret going public with what happened in that No, not at all. No? Listen, I'm about discussing and making aware of violence against women and girls, and I'll go anywhere at any time to fight that cause. And I didn't expect for that to, no. to be directed at me at all. <laughs> Richard Maidley is a killer. He's amazing. I love Richard Maidley. <laughs> he goes, so obviously it's been really terrible for you. Um, do you regret it happening? No, not at all! <laughs> you idiot, Ngozi. <laughs> you idiot! You're supposed to say yes. You're supposed to have a bit of grace. You're supposed to accept apologies. You're supposed to... Oh, who gives a shit? Who am I even talking to? Right? I'm talking to you guys. And here's a message for you guys, right? Because I feel like 55% of you have not subscribed to the channel yet. That's just, you know, a hunch. So what are you doing? I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. It really helps when you sub sub subscribe and like and comment. So I hope you all do those things. And I'll see you in the next one. I've got to get back to my, my holiday.